Cool. Here I'm going to go over different types of filtering methods. Even though the basic idea might be the same, there's different methods to approach it, and that will depend on the protocol or the, the materials you're looking at filtering. So here we have a feed, here we have a, a barrier, and then we have the filtrate. So we're seeing that these larger molecules are being stopped. These smaller ones are allowed to pass through. So looking at filtration in general, separation technique used to isolate solids from liquids or gases using a selective medium. Might be most familiar with that with coffee and filter paper um, associated with uh, isolating co coffee grounds. Uh, filtration terms, the suspension is the initial mixture or solution, and the fluid that passes through the filter is called the filtrate. And that's what's kind of getting through the pores here, and that's ultimately what you're collecting in the container down below here. Common forms of filtration will include uh, brewing coffee, your kidneys, uh, a form of filtration process, very important. Uh, vacuum cleaners are filtering out, and aquarium filters are all, again, examples of areas that you might be familiar with uh, filtration. The filtration methods, there's different methods exist to best match the given uh, situation. Uh, example is the solid suspended or dissolved in the fluid. That may influence uh, what type of method you choose to use and which would be the best to allow the greatest extraction and separation. In general, filtration uh, uses gravity uh, to filter the mixture. Uh, solids remain in the filter while a liquid will pass through. And you might be familiar with doing uh, some sort of labs like this where you're putting a bunch of you know liquid and solid suspension and then you're allowing it over time to gravity pull it through and collecting that liquid below. But there's other forms. Uh, so there's vacuum uh, filtration. A uh, Buchner flask and a hose are used to create a vacuum here to pull the fluid through the um, filter, typically with the aid of gravity. So this is, instead of we were waiting forever for gravity to kind of pull this through, with this setup, with this being sealed here and pulling kind of um, a vacuum to some extent, you're then helping this process along and you still have gravity, you're still working with gravity, but you're kind of speeding that up. And this is great for substances that may take a very long time to filter if you were just to use gravity. Then we go on to hot or cold filtration. So different temperatures will be utilized. If you want to encourage, that'd be cold filtration, or minimize, that'd be hot filtration, crystal formation. So if you're looking at, um, you know, heating something up here, um, that's going to minimize the formation of crystals. And if you're going to be using it in a cold way, here's an ice bath that's going to encourage the formation of crystals through the filtration process. Then we get on to different types of filter paper. This is where qualitative filter paper is used in applications that are routine separation to require or determine identifying um, of those materials. And there's quantitative used where the precipitate is to be covered, typically used with vacuum filtration and to identify uh, specific materials. However, the quantitative filter paper is more precise and is more expensive. So if you don't need that high level of detail, uh, typically you'll be using a qualitative uh, filter paper there. And it's, and they're labeled right on the box, qualitative or quantitative. Uh, again, quantitative used for specific purposes, qualitative a little more broad-based and less expensive.